Dad, what game are we playing today? We are playing Jurassic Park Danger. As if the island didn't give it away, that's what this is. This is the Isla Nublar, where Jurassic Park takes place, which was actually 25 years ago. In 1993, still one of my favorite movies of all times. Very historic event. Love it, yep. Jurassic so this game is about to be released, and of course, because I love the movie so much, it's high on my list of wanting to play. The big question is, does the gameplay live up to my high expectations of what I was after? And so we'll get to that in a minute. But really, what this game is all about, it's a semi-cooperative game, meaning those that play the human characters are cooperating. And then there's going to be one player that controls the dinosaur characters. Because what fun is a dinosaur game without dinosaurs? Absolutely. And so you've got your cool little dinosaurs over here. You've got your T-Rex and your Velociraptor and your Dilophosaurus all here. All the human characters are just represented by their, their little meeples. But you can see everything's nice color-coded, which is pretty slick. So the objective for the human characters is they've got to activate the different points on the island, control center, visitor center, and the maintenance shed, and accomplish their personal goal, and then escape to the helicopter to get off. So the humans have a lot to do. The dinosaur, all he's got to do is kill three characters. Chomp, chomp. <laughs> yeah. The, the good thing is if your character dies, you can come back to life. So even though you lose a character, you're getting back in the game. And... Even as you escape somebody under the helicopter pad, then you take on a new character and, and go at it again. But I'll tell you right now, it's very difficult for the human players. All right, so for setting up the island, you first connect the little puzzle pieces to keep it in the same arrangement all the time. You'll have a stack of perimeter pieces, center pieces, and the start piece. So you begin by randomly putting out all the different perimeters. You can set them all over. So we'll just kind of speed this up. start time. There we go. All the right. island is all set up. The dinosaurs take their place at their starting spots. As you can see, and then our Velociraptor down here. We've got our control center is always going to be off of here. Our maintenance shed and visitor centers are going to be in those spots. So you can see here that the Dilophosaurus is starting near the maintenance shed. It looks like he's starting Ooh. on the maintenance shed. When you me? flip those gray over, you can also see you got a couple other dinosaurs that are going to be there depending on different goals. So that's how those get set up. The other thing that you set up is then the human characters or the human players pick human characters. So you can randomize it or you can go ahead and pick ones that you like. Yeah. Every player gets their own unique set of 10 cards. Here's what they look like. There will be runs, climbs, and some sneaks, as well as some special cards that each player gets. Each player is going to have their own personal goal as well, their character goal. So, for example, he has to go to the Brachiosaurus location to collect him. So, his goal token would then go over here to the Brachiosaurus pad. So, Tim... He gets placed on the start. The player takes his character card and puts his goal here. So once Timmy makes his way over here, he collects his gold token and he keeps it. Once he's got his gold token and these are activated, he can get to the helicopter pad. All right. So say we got Timmy in there. Let's say we're going to have Malcolm. You got to have some chaos theory going in there. So, so we tip pick Nedry. We put his little dude on the start spot. His goal, he begins with his goal token, and he must always be chosen as the target for attack. So if a dinosaur is ever in a spot where Nedry's there with somebody else, he's always going to be targeted for an attack. So Dr. Grant, to accomplish his goal, has to be attacked by distracting a T-Rex and pulling him in. So they got different character goals that really tie into kind of the flavor of, of who they were, which is, which is pretty cool. So say we've got our characters. Let's go ahead and put Dr. Grant in there. So we got four human characters to begin with, and everybody's got their special deck of cards, and they're ready to go. All right, All right, so now that we've set up, what does a regular round look like? All right, well, a round, you take turns. You go back and forth between the dinosaur player 
and then all the human players. So the dinosaur player, he's got his draw pile of his 10 cards. He's going to have three cards in his hand. They will look like this. A couple of different actions. So we've got a run, 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 climb, run, sneak. They can be done in any order. I've got three cards. I'm going to choose what I want to do with my dinosaurs. I'm going to pick one of those and play it face down. I'll keep my hand of cards here. That's the card I'm going to play. Once I've chosen a card, then each of the human characters will pick a card from there. So, for example, let's take Dr. Grant's. Now, in their hand, they're going to have all of the cards. So, all ten cards are going to be their hand. So, really, on his first turn, he can choose to do anything. So, let's say Dr. Grant chooses to run. Smart. Once they've all picked their cards, then the dinosaur reveals his card and says, okay, this is what I'm going to do on my turn. I'm going to run and climb. These have to be different dinosaurs. So a run basically means you can go from an adjacent space. So say I'm going to run the T-Rex into this location. Uh-oh. Yep, he's coming. And we're going to run this guy. Well, we're not going to run him. We're going to climb him. He can climb a deactivated electric fence or he can climb a cliff. So, for example, he could climb into that spot because he climbed over the fence. But you if couldn't it, run through the fence. No, you can't You can't play a run to go over that. If you've got two obstacles here, that still just needs one climb to get over both. So he climbs the fence and the cliff, for example. Okay. Anyway, so he climbs into there. Those are the two actions that the dinosaurs did. But I can also do one other special action. I can pick one of the special dinosaur actions to do. So I could do a T-Rex action, which which would be to attack a character twice, but since he's not in a spot with any characters, that doesn't make sense. But instead, and the Velociraptor can move up to two in a straight line. So for example, I could take this Velociraptor, and since there's no, nothing to climb here, nothing to climb here, he could go, I could do that action and run him in a straight line. That would be terrifying. Yep, and all of a sudden, he is in the spot with all the humans, and as soon as the dinosaur enters a spot with humans, he attacks. Of course. And... Because in this situation, well, the, the humans always get to choose who gets attacked. But because Nedry is in there, if you recall, his goal is that he's always got to be the target of an attack. So the way a dinosaur attack works is they hold up their hand of cards, and the dinosaur randomly takes one of his cards and burns it. Oh, so at the no. top of each of their player boards, there's a burn. So if you burn a card, that means that card is gone for the game. No longer there, so it's going to be less actions that that player gets. So as they slowly get attacked, they're losing that's a bad their thing. options. He's not dead yet, but that is burned. Now he can always take a look at what card was burnt. The dinosaur player won't see it. So for example, his distract card just got burnt. So Dennis Nedry's been attacked. Poor guy. All right, so now it's the human's turn. So we're going to start with Nedry, and Nedry chose to climb. All right. Now where he's going to climb, obviously the dinosaurs are over here. He's going to try to climb this hill so he can get over to the control center. Okay. So if he wants to climb that, the card says he has to roll a five or higher to successfully climb. Oh, dear. Which means it's tough for him to climb. Yeah, he's not very good at climbing. <laughs> Some characters don't. So there's a die in there. You roll the die, and he oh. got a four. All right, so that was unsuccessful. So... If he's unsuccessful in rolling that, he can take that back into hand. He doesn't actually discard it. Or he can boost the die because he's only one off. He can take one of his cards. They have numbers in the bottom corner. And he can burn one of his cards. So let's say he burns one of his run cards. He shows that it's a number one. And he burns it. So that, again, that card is less that he's going to have to work with. But it now makes that die a five. He's successful in climbing. So he climbs that wall and gets into this spot. And then this card is discarded. All right, so Dr. Grant, he chose to run. Nice and simple, discard that, and he's going to run. Now, you can't go into a spot with a dinosaur. Because that would you, be stupid. <laughs> yeah, you can't run or climb into a spot there. So he's going to run over here. All right. The other one that we had run was actually Malcolm was going to run, so we're going to have him actually run over this direction, kind of draw the dinosaurs out. And Timmy chose to sneak. So again, he's got to roll to see if he's successful. He killed Dr. Grant. Oh, no. So he is successful because he got higher than a two. So sneak, what you do with sneak is now, all of a sudden, Timmy 
disappeared. You lay his character down to let you know that he's sneaking. He's hidden. And I'll show you what he does at the start of his next turn. So that's the end of a round. All right, so to show a few more actions of what takes place during the game, let's go on to round two and show you what happens. So remember, Timmy was sneaking. So again, we start with the dinosaurs already picked his card. So of the humans, he's got run, run. So the Velociraptor, he's going to chase Malcolm. Uh-oh. And as soon as he moves in, he attacks him. So he takes one of his cards and burns it. So he's weaker. Then we're going to have the Dilophosaurus run into here. But because Timmy is sneaking, he does not get attacked. If you're sneaking, the dinosaur can't see you. Makes so, sense. Yeah, good for Timmy. So those are the two runs. The other thing that can happen over here is I can now pick another dinosaur action. You just can't do the same one twice. That's why they have this little token. So let's say it's going to be the Dilophosaurus is going to attack. And what that means is basically he can attack someone in an adjacent space. Uh-oh. So because, because of who he is, let's have him attack Nedry again. <laughs> Poor guy. So he spits at him. Again, he's going to lose yet another card. And he's getting pretty low. He's getting a little weak. But he's trying to get over to the control center but he just got spit on. So let's go ahead and have that action take place. Those were okay. the only attacks that happened. So he has run. So we're gonna have Dennis go ahead and run into the control center. So he's gonna try to activate the control center by rolling a five or higher. Uh-oh, he knows how that goes. Yep. He got a two. So let's go ahead and have him boost by burning a three value card, so that makes it a successful five. All right. So it looks like he's not gonna survive very long, but his sacrifice may be worth it because activating the control center now makes all of these locations safe for the humans. So the dinosaurs can't go in them. Exactly, and they can't even attack in there. So this guy can't even spit into there because any humans in there are safe. So these are off limits for the dinosaurs, which is good. When the visitor center is activated, the person can draw two cards. The first person to activate it can draw two cards from their discard pile back into their hand. And the maintenance shed, when that's activated, they can choose to turn on the electric fences. And basically that means that all of these electric fences become electrified, become activated. And you cannot climb over or sneak under electric fences. So it makes navigating a little bit trickier, but it's also trickier for the dinosaurs. So that's what happens when you activate the different, the three different locations. All right. So he made that a little bit safe. So good for him. And then Timmy, here's what happens with Sneak. Because he was sneaking last time, he can now reappear and he can reappear in the same spot or in any adjacent location. Wow. Yeah. So he could pop up in any of these spots. But it looks like Dr. Grant's already making his way to the maintenance shed. So okay. Timmy could pop up here, getting to the visitor center, but he also needs to get his goal token. So let's say he comes over here and he appears in a spot where a dinosaur is. Now you cannot run into a spot or climb into a spot with a dinosaur, but you can appear from a sneak in a spot where a dinosaur is. And that's really good because dinosaurs otherwise could block an area that you couldn't get past because you can't run or climb into them. So at least there is an allowance for a way to get in where a dinosaur is so they can't completely block you out of your objective. The downside is by doing that, as you know, Timmy is going to be attacked. Oh no. And he's gonna have a random card of his burned by the dinosaur player. But the other thing that Timmy did, that was just reappearing after a sneak. Now he's gonna run, in which case, because he can, now he runs into a spot where his goal token is and he successfully got his goal token. Nice. So, so because, he's he's because he snuck last time, he appeared in a different spot to then do his action for this round. Exactly. Yep. So that's a good way to use sneak is to get past the dinosaur. So now, so as we kind of thought, Dennis Nedry died a horrible death during this game. So the human can die a couple of different ways. One is if they, if they run out of cards to play, then they're going to die. If they're unable to play a card uh, on their turn for their action, or if they are attacked by a dinosaur when they don't have any cards left, then they die. And then 
the meeple that's eaten by the dinosaur. So it's over here tracking to how many. So in a four or five player game, he's got to chomp down three humans. Three humans so, for the dinosaurs to win. Yep. And so he's got one. He's well on his way towards that. Uh, and then that player went ahead and picked Dr. Sadler, who has her goal of having to get to the Triceratops pen. So we put her goal there. She's already moved a little bit towards that spot. All right. So it looks like a lot of these players are getting pretty low on their yeah. cards in their See, hands. See, Dr. Grant is down to just two cards left. So now this is going to be dangerous because he's in a spot where he can be attacked. He could be spit on. He could be chased down. And he could lose a card. So he's going to have to play one card. And if he gets attacked, then he's going to be out of cards. He could die. So what you can do instead, at the end of a round, you can take any cards you have left, choose to burn them to get all the cards in your discard pile back in hand. So Whoa. now he's got all these cards that he can play again. So he's kind of revived. He's ready to go. Timmy. All right, so overall thoughts on the game? It's a challenge. It's tough. We've already heard that a few times. It is dang hard for the humans to win. The, the dinosaur player has a blast, I'll tell you that, because he's totally filling in control. He's got three dinosaurs he can move around. He's got multiple actions. Some of these let him move all three dinosaurs at once. Um, plus, he gets to take all of his cards once they're discarded he just draws the whole pile back he's not limited in how many cards those just keep coming back up so the dinosaur player can be all over and can really wreak havoc between the cards and the special actions on the human players um, we have had we have yet to win early as humans or i should say the humans have yet to win a game that we've played um, with different player counts it's a little bit tougher so we're we're doing a house rule where always play with four human characters and that is so that you can spread the dinosaurs out. Other than that, I love the character cards that are in there that they get their special goals that are really tied to it. Uh, they've got special actions like we showed you with Timmy and, and Dr. Sadler's got some others that all make a good variety to the game. We like to choose our human characters randomly. It's tough, but I think that's what makes the challenge. We really like cooperative games. And I like challenging cooperative games where you kind of think through it. But this one isn't necessarily a puzzle that everyone can solve. Everyone has to secretly pick their own actions. You can talk amongst yourselves, even though the dinosaur is going to hear what you're after. But it's still going to come down to a little bit on the die roll, a little bit about how you're burning cards, who the dinosaur attacks, what cards when the dinosaur attacks get burned. Those are going to have an impact on it. So there's a lot going on, but I think the flavor of the game is true to Jurassic Park, which I really like because, yeah, the, human, the humans have got it tough. Yeah, they're in trouble. Trying to, trying to get everywhere and get off the island, and there are deaths going to happen. And some of them you just have to take it in the chin and know that that's going to happen. Um, so, so overall, how would you rate this game? Overall, I still give it a 4 out of 5. Uh, because I think it's it's a fun one. Again, the theme is is a big part of that aspect for it. Uh, I just know in our turns, a lot of people were probably going to roll the dice to see who gets to be the dinosaur player, <laughs> because that's that's quite a fun element of it. So, anyway, uh, thumbs up, and uh, I still do recommend you give it a try. Awesome, thanks, Dad. Yeah.